Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Sandwich of Coherency. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Now, sitting at the helm, we have President Joe Biden and he is the man in charge. So I want to have a look into what is it about Joe Biden that seems to attract I guess people, 80 million voters, most popular president in history, apparently. But I find that odd. And I'll give you an example. I'll I'll just give you a comparison. The last president, Donald Trump. You could ask people about him and people would be more than happy to spew off tons of things that they have to say about him. Now, you take Joe Biden, that's been in office for 47 years. 47. He is older than a lot of, than a lot of people have even been alive. Like he's been in office longer than a lot of people have even been alive. You know, he's his time in office is not too far off from many people's grandparents' age. So think about that perspective right there. And when you ask people what has he done, what has he done? throughout his 47 years that you can point to that spoke to you and just grabbed you and made you want to vote him. What drew you to him? You get a whole lot of, well, he wasn't Trump. He doesn't say this. He says he's going to do this. He says he's going to do that. But if you look at his track record for 47 years, And the company he keeps, you realize that based off of that and how none of that has changed, that you are not going anywhere with this guy. He is not going to do anything. He's got a vice president that before she became vice president was very loud and vocal about the situation happened down at the border. Now she is president, you can't get a peep out of her. By extension, it's the same thing you had with AOC. Oh, she was quick to run to the border and put on the crying face and look so sad and traumatized until you found out that, well, she was standing looking at an empty parking lot basically never went into the facility all the stuff she was saying they were treating people like this and that she has no idea what she was talking about because she never even went in these are the kind of people that you are dealing with you now have a vice president this is the company that he keeps that has been put at the head of the National Space Council, which is ironic because that's a pretty much a program that had been underlooked since George Bush Sr., which Trump had put back into play when he made Mike Pence the head of that, which in my opinion, I, I, I think that that was a bad choice. I, I wouldn't have put him at the helm of that and but that goes back to the whole idea of why do we not have people that are specialized in these fields to help make these decisions to help set at the heads of these councils now i can understand they did it with kamala harris because they wanted to present a woman in the position and she's also a minority so they want to tout that up but at the same time there's 
many others that they could have chose from if that's the group that they were going for. You've got Dr. Beth Brown, who holds a BS degree in natural physics from Howard University. She has an MS in astronomy from the University of Michigan. She also has a PhD in astronomy from the University of Michigan. You've got Dr. Jarita Holbrook. She has her BS in physics from the California Institute of Technology. She has her MS in astronomy from San Diego University. That's just two to start with. There's Reva K. Williams. That's... So I'm not trying to knock on the decision for the position. I'm just pointing out that they could have chosen better. But again, let's get back to the topic at hand and let's look at what the president has done throughout his history. Is he corrupt? I I believe so. Let's have a listen. Now let's just have a listen to what you were told didn't happen just to give you an idea of where this is coming from. I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko. They would take action against the state prosecutor and they didn't. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, we're leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. That's the current president explaining how he got the prosecutor in the Ukraine removed from his position. The irony is that the prosecutor was investigating Burisma Holdings, a fuel company in the Ukraine that, for some reason, his son, which has no experience in this, just happens to be up at the head of. So what did the prosecutor have to say? We had plans that included interrogations and other crime investigation procedures into all members of the executive board, including Hunter Biden. Oh, he just happens to be the guy that's investigating your son. You just conveniently had removed from this position. So that, that's just one little bit. Let's, let's look at us. What else do we have? from President Joe Biden. So, we have Hina Shamsi, whom was fighting on behalf of the Holy Foundation, the Holy Land Foundation, whose leaders were convicted of providing material support to Hamas. So what did they do? They made Shamsi the head of the ACLU National Security Project. But Shamsi now has a new job. And that is to be one of the oversights from the Biden administration to crack down on quote unquote extremism in the military. So that's just one. We also have Faisa Patel, who wrote against, you know, arguing that the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. Hmm. I think there are many people that would adamantly disagree with that. So, these are the two people that will be oversighting into 
the U.S. military. We have General Lloyd Austin. But before I get to that, before I get to Lloyd Austin, I want to point out that one of the people who will also be working with this, because this is directly connected to Lloyd Austin, is Wal Alziat, who is the CEO of Engage. He's also one of the founding members of the group Karim Wai, which has been described as the country's most prominent terror lawyers and whose clients include an Al Qaeda operative who plotted to kill George Bush. So he was also placed on a terrorist watch list. Hmm. But we'll be working under General Lloyd Austin. Now, the thing about General Lloyd Austin is yes he is the first black head of the, the civilian military only problem is is that he was hired illegally he had not been out of he had not been retired from the military for the near seven years he was supposed to be before he could be hired into that position Well, he's already helped make things a muck with General Milley. The same General Milley that was responsible for lying to the previous president when the previous president was trying to withdraw troops, Milley and his cohorts decided to tell him that the troops had already been withdrawn, giving him false numbers in order to be able to keep troops and staff and personnel in Afghanistan. Now, I wonder, had they not blatantly and illegally lied to their commander in chief at the time, would the debacle that was the exit out of Afghanistan under Biden, would that have been, would that have gone the same? Would it have been the same situation? This is the same guy who, working with Obama, supported Saudi Arabia being added to the UN Human Rights Council. During the same year, they beheaded around 100 people. They also approve of China being a part of the United Nations Human Rights Council. The same people that imprisoned the Falun Gong Christians and other sects of Christianity simply for being Christian. And they will be next on China's block for re-education. The same people that keep the Uyghur Muslims in an open air prison. So let's see what else is Biden done. Well, we already know that he wrote and he sponsored the 1994 crime bill, which saw an increase in minority imprisonment. We know he supported the North American Free Trade Agreement, which saw thousands upon thousands upon good jobs leaving the United States. But he also worked with the credit card companies, mainly with MBNA. And he got the rules changed for bankruptcy laws. Which also included the parameters for bankruptcy for people with student loans. Now, this is around 95 or so. 
This is important to understand is that this student loan debt crisis that's happening in the United States is directly the consequence of what he did back in the 90s. His policies and his ambition to change the structure of bankruptcy laws for reasonings and the amount that people can claim uh, chapter 7 and chapter 13. What's happening now is the direct result of those policies. So the guy who told you he's going to cancel up to $50,000 worth of your student debt is lying to you now. This is the same, the, the guy that is responsible for it being that way. That's the guy you put into office. You voted for the guy who caused the problem to begin with. The 94 crime bill. You voted for the guy that put that into place. Now, the other thing we have to look at is he put that into place and he also changed it again in 2005 and that happened right before the recession you have to understand his policies the financial woes and economic problems that people have been facing right now are directly linked to what he did in his 47 years in office. We're just now only talking about it. What else has he delivered to you? Well, he delivered to you a shortage of workers and drivers, which is why there are 70 ships just hanging out in the ports waiting to get in. They estimate that it will be backed up like this until the end of 2022. They've been authorized to work the ports 24 hours a day. What most people don't know is that 40% of all imports come in through Los Angeles and the Long Beach ports. That's what they've delivered to you. A lot of trucking companies have left California because of their need to tax everybody out of existence, independent contractors are under attack. So what else have they given you? Well, used cars are up 24% in most places. Bacon is up 19%. Hotels are up 18%. Beef is up 18%. Pork is up 13%. Eggs are up 13%. Electricity is up 5%. Even apples are up 8%. But according to the press secretary, this is good. This means that the economy is growing. Yes, things are now becoming even more out of the price range of people who were unable to afford them to begin with, but this is a good thing. But to close this off tonight, I wanted to leave you with a little bit of a list of some nice democratic policies out of New York. We're going to look at just a few things off to their um, bail reform, things that judges won't be or are limited from placing bail on. 
So if you get in trouble in New York and you do any of these things, you will be let out without bail. You would just be let out. Prime example, you did have one guy who robbed five banks and was let out each time. And it was only when the federal prosecutors decided to get involved that they held him in jail. So as of right now, things that will get you out of jail with no bail. Second degree burglary, residential as a hate crime and commercial. We're just going to skip down. Um, use of a child to commit a controlled substance offense. Let's see. Third degree assault. Third degree assault as a hate crime. Reckless assault of a child by a daycare provider. Reckless assault of a child in general. I want you to understand that in New York, there will be no bell set for the daycare provider that decides to put their hands on the child. Criminally negligent homicide. Criminal obstruction of breathing or blood circulation. Second degree vehicular manslaughter. Aggravated vehicular manslaughter. Second degree manslaughter. First and second degree unlawful imprisonment, i.e. kidnapping. Aggravated labor trafficking. Let's see. Let's see, there's a really good one that I think you're going to really have fun with this one. Larceny is no longer a bell offense. Let's see. Bribing a juror, bribing a witness, making a sworn, a false sworn statement. Hmm. Hmm. Tampering with physical evidence. Any prostitution in a school zone, that is. As well as, ah, there it is. Most sex trafficking will get you out of jail without bail in New York. There were three guys found with about $7 million worth of fentanyl. Now, one of the main ones who was here illegally because of New York City in Manhattan being sanctuary cities, they were not allowed to coordinate with the ICE agents. So, the guy with $7 million worth of fentanyl was just released. <clears throat> Poof, into the wind. And, but hey, hey, you know, he'll come back. He'll, he'll definitely come to court. Right? Right. Now, if you want to read the full list, you can go to the American Bell Coalition dot org and you can actually see the entire list. But I just want to help you have an understanding of what it is that you voted for. So when people ask you, well, why did you vote for him? Now you can tell them. Though I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too quick to do it. <laughs> well, I thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.